Imagine being able to make espresso at home or really anywhere that rivals the espresso you can get at your local cafe, and it all fits in this little carrying case. Let's check out the Waikiko Pico Presso. Hello, my name is Stephen Holm and I'm with Home Grounds. We make videos, write articles to help you brew and enjoy better quality coffee right at home. If you're new around here, welcome. If you'd like to subscribe, that would help us and it would help you so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. So like I said, today we are checking out the Waikiko Pico Presso. I still don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Waikiko, Waikako, Waikako. But anyways, this is a portable espresso maker. It fits in one hand and it only costs 129 US dollars. So we're gonna talk about what comes with this, how it works, what things we at Home Grounds love about this espresso maker and some things that maybe we don't necessarily like. And then finally, who this is for. So let's just jump right into an overview and what comes with the Pico Presso when you buy it. So Waikiko is known for making these sort of portable espresso makers. They have quite a few out, one being the Nano Presso, which is right here that we'll use to kind of compare size and everything to the new Pico Presso. But the Pico Presso is the newest addition to their lineup. And we will talk about some of the newest features and things that they really improved upon with this model. So if we open up the case here, we see everything fits in this little contraption. So right away we can see it has the usual sort of pumping mechanism that these other brewers all have. And then let's open it up and see what's inside. Up on top, this is the water chamber. So right up here we have a dosing basket, which fits on the basket we'll see later and then also a tamper. I love this tamper. We will get into it in a bit. And then also in this top portion, we have a couple little small things. We have this little brush and then a little distribution tool, which is a really nice little touch here. Now, if we go to the bottom of the brewer, right away we have a cap, sort of just keeping everything on there. And then also we have a pressurized gasket sort of thing. I take it right off because when we remove it, we reveal the naked porta filter. That's one of the things that makes this brewer so great is we have that naked porta filter so we can actually see the espresso pulling. We can adjust things based on the visuals of the espresso pulling from the basket. So that's a really nice touch. And then if we remove the bottom here, this unscrews and that's what holds the basket. So these are actual baskets versus we'll look at the ones in the Nano Presso. There's a 52 millimeter basket. And then we also have a scoop, which I have too many scoops, but this one is kind of interesting in that it has a arm that swings out. So you're able to fold it in and make it compact. So it fits in there. And then finally we have a shower screen, which is another really great feature. The water is being pumped through this small little hole here. And then the screen is able to disperse it pretty evenly amongst all these holes at the bottom. Let's compare some of the parts in here to the Nano Presso. So I'll just sort of set these aside for now. So here's the Nano Presso. Already you can see that although it is like skinnier than the Pico Presso, it's actually a little bit taller. We have the same pump mechanism on here, which comparing the two, they're pretty similar. I wouldn't really say there's any big differences there. Now the Nano Presso, one nice thing is it does have a cup, which the Pico Presso doesn't have. So that's one thing you're missing out on. With this, you're also getting, you know, the water container, a scoop, and a brush. You're not getting a distribution tool with this one. If we open up the bottom, really it's just this basket here, plastic. I'm not sure exactly what material this is, but that compared to the new actual espresso basket, it's probably not going to extract as evenly with this. And it's also just smaller, so you're not able to get as large doses with the Nano Presso. So yeah, that's a look at the Nano Presso, just to give you a comparison of the size differences and some of the feature differences. Now, along with everything we see here, this is everything that comes with the base kit. You can also buy from Waikiko a separate 12 gram basket, which is gonna be for single dosing. The basket here is rated for 18 grams, but if you're looking for something smaller, they do have that 12 gram option. Now I've got some water heating up behind me. That is one thing you have to consider if you're gonna be using this as a travel coffee brewer. You do still need a way to get hot water. In addition to the hot water, which you can probably hear going behind me, 
You also need a way to grind coffee. Now you can obviously pre-grind your coffee. It's always better to grind fresh. I'm going to be grinding 18 grams of coffee on this hand grinder. This is from Normcore. But the last thing you can have that is optional is a scale. It is good if you're trying to get the best quality espresso so you can measure your dose and your yield. But like I said, if you're out in the wilderness or something, you're probably not gonna bring a scale with you. And it's okay if you're just eyeballing it. This espresso maker can make really, really amazing espresso, but it can just make good espresso too if you're camping. So I'm gonna be using a scale here so I can show you just how great it can be. Now, as far as grind size goes, I'm finding that I'm grinding at about the same fineness as I would for a normal espresso machine, so very fine. You wanna make sure you have a grinder fine enough to grind for espresso. And... And my workflow for this, once we have our coffee ground, is to take our basket along with the dosing ring right here, place the ring on there, and dump your coffee grounds into the basket. Now we're going to take this and use our distribution tool. If you haven't used one of these before, they're really nice just to break up clumps and sort of start to even out your bed of coffee grounds in your basket. So you just take that and move it around in there, getting rid of all the clumps and getting a fairly level bed. And then leave the dosing funnel on and take your tamper, press it on there and just press and the tamper actually gets level with the top of the dosing ring. So you have an even tamp every time. I really love that solution. I think that's really smart of them. And then you just take that all out. You have a nice level bed of espresso grounds in there. I'm gonna set that aside for a second. And then the next step I usually take is I like to preheat the brewer along with my mug. So I'm just gonna take some hot water, pour it in the top here, pump that out into my mug. So now both of these are nice and preheated. I can dump this rinse water out and get brewing. Now to put this all together, just put the basket in this collar here. Take the shower screen, place that on top of the basket. Screw that all into the bottom of the brewer. And then you're just gonna pour water almost to the top. Scale, cup, tear that out. And now to start off, I actually do what Waikako recommends and do eight pumps for a pre-infusion. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I start my timer and I let that go for a 10 second pre-infusion. And then after that, you just begin to pump at a constant rate. And then you will start to get beautiful espresso coming out. I brewed that at a one to two ratio, so I aim for 36 grams out. It is sort of difficult to get this to stop at your exact yield you're shooting for. I guess you could sort of like flip it and get it out of the way as soon as you hit your number, but I'm okay if it goes, you know, half a gram over or so. That is it. Now we have delicious espresso. We'll give this a sip. And that's better than the espresso that I get at a cafe like 95% of the time really nice and juicy it's bright it's sweet it just brews really great espresso and the nice thing about this is I feel like there's nothing really hindering the potential of your espresso I think a great espresso machine can add a lot of bells and whistles you know we can have pressure profiling adjustability for temperature and pressure and all of these things but the best espresso machines in my opinion are ones that just don't get in the way of the quality of your espresso there's nothing holding you back from getting the best espresso possible you can and that's what i think this does great yeah it could have a few more features which we'll get into a little bit later but at its baseline it can make really really delicious espresso i feel like i've said that a hundred times now really quickly before we dive into what we at home grounds love about the pico presso we are doing a giveaway of one of these brewers. Wikiko has generously donated a Pico Presso for one of you to win. So all of the information on the giveaway will be in the description down below. If there is a secret code, uh, try slurp slurp. The giveaway will last one week from the publication of this video, so be sure to enter before then, and good luck. Okay, so what do we at Home Grounds love about the Pico Presso? Well, the first one is probably obvious because I think I've said it like 15 times in this video, but it has the ability to make incredible espresso. And at a price point of 129 US dollars, 
I really don't think that there is a better espresso maker anywhere in this price range, especially one that is extremely portable. And because of that price point, I think that makes this product really unique in that it makes delicious espresso at home accessible to a much wider audience. Because espresso machines, as you probably know, are very expensive. And the fact that you can get the same level of espresso as those in this is really incredible. Another thing we love is it's just incredibly easy to use. Once you get used to the routine of distributing your grounds in the basket and tamping and you get the pumps down, it's really easy to make great espresso. And there's not many things that can really go wrong besides maybe having a really coarse grind size or not using enough coffee or something along those lines. And then the last thing we love is it just really is extremely portable. I know that's what it's designed for, but the fact that everything fits right in this case and the only other things you need are hot water and coffee, that makes this a really great product for camping, backpacking, if you're traveling, staying at hotels. And on top of traveling, it's also great to just have in your kitchen at home. This will probably be the espresso maker that I use permanently in my home kitchen, and I have no issues with that. There is not much else that I would wish for when I make espresso, you know, on the weekends when I'm at home. Now, there are so many things that we love about this brewer, but there are a couple things that are little quirks and maybe things that we don't love as much. The first of those being the pump mechanism in these brewers is sometimes pretty awkward. I'm used to it by now because I've used the Nanopresso so much and this quite a bit now as well, but it's kind of difficult to use pumping and keeping steady at the same time. Sometimes you can go to pump and it's just sort of all over the place because there's quite a bit of pressure in there that you have to push pretty hard and it's hard to keep a steady hand. So the pumping mechanism isn't really something that I don't like, but I do know some people that don't like it so it is worth mentioning. The only thing that this brewer is really missing that would bring it up to the next level is a pressure gauge. Because if you know much about espresso, you know that it's good to have a consistent pressure of, we'll just say around nine bars, but a lot of people like espresso below that pressure. Having a gauge really allows you to see what's going on and it allows you to dial in espresso even more. So I don't really know how a gauge would work on an espresso maker like this, if it would still be able to be as portable, but having that on this would just bring it up another little level so that you are getting more consistent results with every espresso. So all of that being said, who do we think that the Pico Presso is for? I would say pretty much anyone looking to make delicious espresso. If you are on a budget, this is a great introduction espresso machine that you can play around with variables and really be able to dial in your craft. If you have been making espresso for a long time and want a reliable one to bring on the road wherever you go, this is perfect. There are a bunch of portable espresso makers out there, but I think given the price of $129 for this, I think this is the best option at its price point. So that is everything you need to know about the Wakeco Pico Presso. Don't forget about our giveaway. Once again, everything will be in the description down below. If you have any further questions or things that I missed about the Pico Presso, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy brewing.